Hey there, this is Josh Oaks, and in this short video, I am going to show you how and why you should set up a two-step verification to keep your Gmail account from getting hacked. My name is Josh Oaks. You can learn more about us at MediaLeaders.com. Let's jump right on into it. You're probably asking, Josh, why should I use two-step verification? Well, it's a reality that getting your email hacked is something that happens quite often online. It's, I like to say, like the common cold. It's not if it's going to happen, it's when it will happen. So you need to be prepared for it to happen. Now, Josh, how does hacking occur? How does it take place? Well, let me walk you through a couple different scenarios real fast. A story, and then we'll show you how to turn this thing on. First of all, hackers can find your email address typically if you share it anywhere on the web. So be careful. Don't post it on your website. Then, if they do find it somewhere, they'll try and log in using the most common passwords that people typically use. It could be admin123 or password or the a typical dog's name with an uppercase first name. They've figured out that there's a thousand of these out there and these robots will try it. These hackers are smart. Or they'll try and create a fake site that looks like your email login, so you'll give them your password thinking you're logging in. This could also be for bankofamerica.com. All these phishing sites out there that look like you're actually logging into your, your trusted site, but really you're giving them your login and password. And eventually, they'll do their best job trying to crack the code in one way or another and get access to your account. So let's jump onto this. What does this look like, Josh? Well, here's what it looks like. If you're in my Gmail inbox, I've, caught, I've gotten rid of all my other emails, but you can see that David wrote a no subject email at 5.38 a.m. today. And this is why I'm shooting this video. This happened twice to my friends today, and I want to show you how I've overcome this. They sent me an email. Well, if you click on David's email, this is what it looks like in Gmail. It says no subject, and then it has this, it's sent to a lot of people and it has this shady link in it at 5.38 a.m. And if you click on this link, it's a PHP file and it's shady. It probably has a virus or something in it. And everybody goes, oh, it's from David. I, I should probably just click on it. Well, you don't want to do that. And some people might even click the spam button because they go, oh, David's spamming me and he doesn't know it. Well, then it's hurting David. Well, why is this a big deal, Josh? Why should I even care? Well, if someone gets access to your account or David's, your friend's accounts, the hacker is going to start emailing your friends from inside your account and send them spammy links that have viruses embedded or sales links to your friends. So they're going to use your trusted name to start selling to your friends. Not to men mention they can also look up bank account records and all kinds of family info and all that stuff. And then your friends might click on the links and possibly get infected from unsafe sites. And some of your friends might even click the spam button no that you've been hacked and then in the future your emails are going to be flagged and this is going to hurt you in the long run because your deliverability goes down the a chance of your email actually arriving in someone's inbox Josh what's two-step verification good question this is taken directly from Google site two-step verification helps keep the bad guys out of your account by using both your password and your cell phone your mobile phone gets implemented here let me show you how it works first of all how does two-step verification differ from the traditional method on the left the traditional method shows that first you'd go to Gmail next you insert your username and your password and you're in okay cool but two-step throws in a little a bit of a hook. You go to Gmail, you answer username, password, and then Gmail sends your cell phone a six-digit confirmation code. You pick up your cell phone and you use that code and insert it into your Gmail, and then you're in. And what it does is it, it confirms your identity. It says, hey, only Josh is going to have his cell phone. So if Josh tries to log in with his password, and if he can't give us that special code, then that means he doesn't have a cell phone on him and something weird is happening, therefore we can't trust him. So that's what two-step verification is, password plus cell phone. All right, what is this, Josh, how do I set this up? Let's get right to the good stuff. Okay, great. Go to gmail.com. You probably have a Gmail address. If you have a Google Apps address, this works as well. It gets a little bit more complex, but this is how it works. First of all, you go into Gmail and you see in the upper right this orange area up here. 
Well, you're going to click on this settings, click the drop down area up there. And when you click on settings, then you're going to jump in the back end here on settings, click on accounts and import there. And you're going to go to this next page. It's going to show all the email addresses you can send mail as. I want you to click on other Google account settings there. And when you click on other Google account settings, it takes you to your Google accounts area. And I want you to then click on security. Once you've clicked on security, then you're going to see this. It's going to say password and recovery options. And you can change your password, update recovery options. But look at this, two-step verification. If you have Google Apps, your administrator has to turn on the opportunity for you to be able to turn this on yourself. And if it is on, two-step verification uses your phone. I click settings. Now, it's already on for me, but if you want to turn it on and you haven't, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to take you to this page where you can learn more. Two-step verification. Help keep the bad guys out. Enter your password, enter your code from your phone, and keep it simple. Now, you click Getting Started, and then to start, start the setup, it looks like this. It describes to you what it looks like. The next step is, which phone should we send the codes to? Give it your most reliable cell phone number, the one you're going to have at home and at work. Put in, and I prefer to have it text message, SMS me. Then, once it's it's going to immediately send you a text. It says enter the verification code. It shows, a, shows them that you have that phone beside you right now and that really is your phone. Once you've done that and clicked verify, I would keep this on. Trust this computer. And what that does is it trusts that computer, the computer you're on, for 30 days. That way you'll never have to do this verification every day when you ar arrive at work. Once a month, it'll try and verify that you really are that person. Okay, next. When you click confirm, great, and you're, you're now confirmed, and you'll only be asked for the code whenever you sign in using that account every 30 days on this computer. So it's pretty easy. Okay, that's great. Now what's next, Josh? How does this work? Well, let me show you something that's really important here. If some apps might not play well with two-step verification, so you're going to need to create some special codes. Let me, let's read what Google says about this. Some apps may need new passwords. If you're using apps or devices that can't access verification codes, they're going to need to use a special kind of password instead. And what this means is, if it isn't smart enough to say, enter your password, oh, now Google's requiring this six-digit code, then it's going to need a special password from the get-go, and Google will create that password for you. And this is an example of that would be email apps on your iPhone or iPad, email programs including Outlook, Google Sync, and Calendar Sync. So I click Create Passwords, and this is really important. Uh, here's what it looks like. It asks you to log back in. So it's got your email address. Put your password in again because you're going to go create some unique passwords. And this is when you're setting up your iPad email, your iPhone email, um, things that don't necessarily natively work with Google, but they want to check in on Gmail. Once you're logged in, it looks like this. It says two-step verification is on for this email address. I've hidden my Gmail address in my Google Apps. Here's your phone number you have for two-step. We're going to text message you here. Here's a backup phone. I put my office number in there. This is where I want you to click manage application specific passwords. And what happens here is you then click that and it takes you to this page. Here's the authorized access to your Google account. Here's the connected sites. Now right now I have Google Calendar and it's asking me, Josh, step one, if you do you want to generate a new application specific password? I typed in Josh's iPhone 5 exchange account because I want to set up uh, email on my iPhone 5 that c accesses my Gmail address. When you click generate, the reason you name it is because in the future it's going to sit up here and you want to be able to know what you created a unique password for. You click generate password and once you've clicked to generate password then it goes great. Here's your special password. Do you see this series of numbers, 16 letters? Ignore the spaces. You don't need to memorize the password, and you should not You should need to only enter it once. This is a one-time password. So you can copy and paste this into an app, or you can just type it. All lowercase, spaces don't matter. They're just put in there to make it easy. And once you click uh, accept on the device that needs a password for two-step, then it goes, great, you're in, because it thinks that's your unique password. And once you click done, then you're going to notice a new device up here. Cool. You can revoke access to any of these at any one given time, which is quite refreshing and nice. But you can see that Gmail, the OS app, tried to is logging in now. Cool. Okay, now if you're really advanced and you do this a lot, I've got a bunch of these different devices. I've got Twitter logging in. I've got 
connected or LinkedIn, all these different things that want to log in. And if you scroll down, you'll see some application specific passwords. So these are the apps up top that have asked for the six digit code. And these are the apps that don't work well with the six digit code. My BlackBerry Sync app, I used to have a BlackBerry, iPod, BlackBerry, iPad, Gmail, um, Android tablets sometimes, and so on and so on. Okay, my friends, now that is how to set up a two-step verification to keep your Gmail account from getting hacked. Very important. I think you're going to love it. Comment below if you've used this, if you like it, if you have more questions. I want to be here to help. My name is Josh Oaks. If you like this video, please visit MediaLeaders.com and go check out my new book, Light, Bright, and Polite where I teach you real-world marketing tips and social media formulas from the 36-plus brands that I advise in social media. Light, bright, and polite. I'm honored that you watched the video. I hope you learned a little bit, and I will see you soon at MediaLeaders.com. Have a great day.